high, um, as well as a little bit of the anatomy of the popliteal fossa. Full disclosure, I'm not going to be talking too much about um, anything below the knee, um, too much of, like, not too, too much of the popliteal fossa anatomy, because I don't have, like, a really, really good grasp on it, so I'd rather not be teaching it in a video. Um, so starting with the muscles of the posterior thigh, um, so basically just looking on the left side of my model, we have, um, basically we have three muscles that I'm going to be talking about, one of which has a long head and a short head. And these muscles are innervated by the sciatic nerve, which has its origins L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. Um, the muscles generally extend the hip joint and flex the knee, and they're supplied mostly by the perforating branches of the profundal artery, or the deep femoral artery. And I'm going to show you just what I mean by that here in a bit. So starting with the um, semi-membranous and semi-tendinous um, muscles, basically here, sorry, one sec. Here we have the semi-tendinous muscle. And what I like to remember is that semi-tendinous has a T in it, so it's on top of the semi-membranous mu muscle, which has an M in it, which means it's medial, or more medial. So semi-tendinous, semi-membranous, and then on the lateral aspect of the posterior compartment of the thigh, um, you have the uh, biceps femoris and the long head of the biceps femoris. Um, so this originates from the ischial tuberosity. So I'm just going to come up here a bit and remove the gluteus maximus and zoom in. So we have the biceps femoris and this is the ischial tuberosity right here. So we have the ischial gluteal bursa I'm hiding. So ischial tuberosity, which I've highlighted, and it's right here. And as you can see, we have the sacrospinous or sacrotuberous ligament coming off the ischial tuberosity and then the origin of the semitendinous, semimembranous, and biceps femoris, the long head of it, all are from the ischial tuberosity. And then the, um, the biceps femoris long head and short head both converge into a common tendon right here. So here we have the biceps femoris short head which I'm going to remove the biceps femoris long head here in a second so I can better show you. show you. I'm going to remove this as well. Okay, hiding that. Okay, so the biceps femoris long head originates from the ischial tuberosity up here, right here. And then if we zoom in, biceps femoris long head originates from the femur, but they both join up to form a common tendon. That's not really well shown, shown here, um, but that is the case. And one thing that is important is that every single muscle I've spoken of, the biceps femoris, semimembranous, semitendinous, they all um, extend, or sorry, they all flex the knee, but only three of them extend the hip. The one that doesn't is the bicep femoris short head, and basically that's because it inserts onto the femur and not the ischial tuberosity like the other three. Okay. So now I'm just going to talk a little bit about the innervation and blood supply of these as well as the popliteal fossa. So what I want to start you off with is the just talking a bit about the adductor magnus because it's pretty important to the anatomy, um, both the innervation and the venous and arterial supply of the hamstrings, which we, we were just talking about. So just kind of a review of the adductor magnus. I'm just going to remove some of these so I can better visualize it. So it's one of the adductor, uh, it's the largest of the adductor muscles, and if you remember, it has two components. Basically, here's the adductor magnus, and it has two components separated by the adductor hiatus. So it has a hamstring component, which is right here, and if you zoom in a bit, you can see that it's that these muscle fibers um, run anterior to superiorly throat right up until it attaches to the pubic um, the pubic sex or the pubis of the um, the hip bones my apologies so this is the hamstring portion and it's medial and then you can see that there's these muscles that run kind of right to left here or medial to lateral 
and those are the adductor portions, so the portions that draw the thigh inwards. Um, and then right here is the adductor hiatus where our femoral vein and femoral artery are going to dive from anterior to posterior and once passing through the hiatus they'll become the popliteal vein and artery and I'll show that better just on the left side here in a second. Um, okay and so just to clarify the hamstring portion is aids in knee flexion like most of the other or like all the other hamstrings and it's innervated by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. So if you remember the adductor magnus is part of the medial compartment of the thigh which is innervated by the obturator nerve. Now everything in that part of the thigh is innervated by the obturator nerve but this hamstring portion right here. So here's the abductor hiatus right here. This is the hamstring portion and that is innervated by the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve not the obturator nerve which comes through I don't have it here but comes through right here. Uh, sorry, that was a bit quick. Right here to come out and innervate the medial compartments. So I just want to show you a couple things before turning this thing back posteriorly. Um, basically, I'm just going to remove the vastus muscles so that we can kind of get a better view here. As well as this guy. Okay, so this looks a bit messy, but it's really not that bad. Just like on the left side here, starting, I'm just going to start anteriorly so I can kind of walk you guys down here a bit. And I covered this a bit on my last video. Um, but you have the external iliac artery. So common iliac, external iliac, it turns into the common femoral, which there's the superficial femoral, and there's the deep femoral. So the first thing I'd like to talk about, sorry, I'm just going to get this out of the way. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is the deep femoral artery. So basically the deep femoral artery is what supplies the posterior hamstring muscles. So we got these muscles back here that I was talking about, semi-memorous, semi-tendinous, um, so on and so forth, and the biceps, um, femoris, long and short head. Now, the in order for the blood supply to get from anterior, from the deep femoral artery, to posterior, there's perforating branches, which I have highlighted right here, that come off the profunda, or the deep femoral artery, travel through this muscle right here, the abductor magnus, to these muscles um, posteriorly, which I've highlighted. And they supply them. So if you're asked about the supply of those muscles, it's perforating ar arteries of the profunda, or the deep femoral artery. The next thing I want to talk about while I'm kind of in this anterior view is kind of the superficial femoral artery and the femoral vein. So the superficial femoral, femoral artery is also just called the femoral artery sometimes. Um, and basically, I want to talk about how those travel to the popliteal fossa to become the popliteal artery and vein. So basically, like I was saying, you have two components of the adductor magnus. You have the hamstring component, just back on the right-hand side here, right here. And then you have the adductor component right here. And then this is the adductor hiatus right here, with its lateral boundary being the femur and medial boundary. Um, being the adductor magnus and superior boundary being the other portion of the adductor magnus. Now just looking back on the left hand side here, here it is again. And as you can see, the femoral artery and femoral vein go through that hiatus, and then if I turn it around, to, I'm just going to turn it around and just remove some of these muscles here, biceps femoris long head, and the semitendinous, and semimembranous. So as you can see, they come through and end up in the popliteal fossa, which is right here. And this is what it looked like if I had the muscles there. So you can actually see um, the popliteal vein. And that's the same as what we're looking at right here. So they travel through, become the popliteal vein and the popliteal artery once they've gone through this hiatus and ended, enter the popliteal fossa. Um, and I guess now that we're kind of back here looking at the posterior side of my model, um, they have the boundaries listed of the posterior fossa in the dissector. So just to review them really quick, the upper lateral boundary, so just looking at the left side of my model here, the upper lateral boundary is the biceps femoris long head. So this is the fossa right here. Upper lateral, biceps femoris. Um, the upper medial is both the semi-membranous 
and the semitendinous. The um, lower boundaries on the medial side is the gastronemus medial head and the uh, gastronemus lateral head. And then it's just noted in the dissector, so I'm going to point it out. This is the plantaris below those two. I may as well hide these guys. The plantaris right here. Um, I don't really know too much about it, so I'm just going to leave that for you guys to look up. But coming back to the right side of my model, you can see that in the popliteal fossil there's several important structures. As I said, there's the popliteal vein, popliteal artery, but there's also the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve, which used to be traveling together as a sheath, and around the popliteal fossa they separate um, and kind of go their separate ways with the common fibular nerve traveling laterally and, and superficially, and the tibial nerve moving posteriorly and deep. And just so that you guys can kind of visualize that. There we go. Okay, um, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for now. Um, yeah, that's about everything. I detail what exactly happens to the popliteal vein and the popliteal artery in one of my other videos. Um, and we'll see, I might make a third video just talking a bit more about kind of what happens um, in the posterior calf kind of area and then the various anastomoses and branches of um, vein and artery splice around the foot, but we'll see. So yeah, for now that pretty much covers everything I was interested in. Um, cheers.